Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we take junk that we get for free or next to free and turn it into home decor that we sell on our website, jamierayvintage.com or in our shop in Lehigh. And today, the theme of the day is um, paint some stuff pretty to bring in some color. I don't know if you guys can even see that. You see this split here? This has been sitting outside. The weather got it, it snowed on it. Um, when it was fall, it was fine. It wasn't really raining or doing anything. And now the snow has cracked this top. So, so we're going to repair crack. that. So this we paid, I think, like $4 for at the thrift store. This was actually free. Um, my friend Joanne AC left it on our porch with a bunch of other stuff at the shop. And it's been in the shop like this, needing a freshening up. And I used Queen Bee last night for a project and thought you know what, I should use this color more. So I'm gonna paint this in Queen Bee. There, you can see that split right here a little better. Maybe. Anyway, just know that the top is cracked in half and this happens quite frequently to these chairs because this uh, this is just laminated together. So Zeb's gonna fix that. I'm gonna get a coat on this. And once he gets that fixed, we actually have another chair that's not cracked that we might get to painting Still as got well. snow on it. <laughs> It still has snow on it. Yep. All right. So I like to flip things upside down and paint the underside first. It just makes life easier. And then I've got one of our big French grain sack stencils. I think it's going to be cute on top. All right. So what I'm doing over here, I just have, this is just common pine scrap piece of wood. Needed it to fit right here next to this piece. And I'm going to drill six holes in it uh, three on each side and then i'll clamp glue and clamp it and then once that's glued and clamped then we'll screw this down onto it and it should be good as new as soon as i get the paint on this i'm going to show you a few projects that we finished up um and i will later today have a short video up with all of our thrift flips for the week so watch for that um we did do you guys remember the b uh tin that we had i did paint that and i used queen bee on it and it turned out super cute i look very glam today <laughs> i put on a lot of makeup she's got her floral t-shirt on all right so this is a counter sink bit and it's just got a drill in the center uh, just regular like probably eighth inch and then it's got this cutting edge that's going to drill a nice little flat spot for the head of the screw so it can sit down flush and then this, I just use this as like a, this is just a four by four and some two by sixes that I made the right height for my miter saw table. But it also works really good for drilling down in without creating a lot of holes in all the stuff you don't want holes in. Like the countertop. Yeah, please don't do that. This countertop is not replaceable. It is not. It is old rafters out of this house. But this will keep your wood, well, it'll help keep it from splitting and also make the head of that screw flush. And I only have two inch screws. I need to make sure this isn't gonna go through the top. All right, we should be good. Should be. <laughs> should is the optimum word here. Yeah, this is like a really pretty mustard color. I personally would probably not put it on a giant piece, but as an accent color, I really like it and I should probably use it more. So I'm going to. I think we could use it on a giant piece. I would love it in like a dark oil wax. I think you can. It's just like, I just don't feel like big yellow pieces sell. Little ones do. Although guess what you guys, you always have to be patient for the right person. We had this sweet lady come in yesterday and she looked at our, remember the green dresser we did with the- um, At the big copper- The uh, paradise- pool? a uh, bird inlay on it and it had a big were they copper or brass i think they were copper well they were brass and we painted them with the yes. pennies from heaven or something like that big uh handles on it we probably painted it maybe a year ago i don't whenever yeah. the inlay came out and this lady came in yesterday it's in the back of our shop she loved it her son said maybe you should sleep on it and she asked how long we'd hold it and i said 24 hours and then i noticed that she bought it so i messaged maria and she said that she basically was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna buy this. I'm not waiting 24 hours. And then um, her card didn't work for whatever reason. Sometimes cards are stinky. And her son who had told her to wait went ahead and just bought it for her. I was like, now that's a good boy. And she was so happy. She really wanted it. They're coming to pick it up today. 
So I actually need to get a piece of furniture painted in the next couple of days to replace that. I probably should have done one of those tables we have in the garage. I got to go get in two more clamps. So maybe later today while Zeb's working on building the chicken coop, I'll film myself painting one of those cute antique tables that we bought last week. All right, I'm going to flip this over. Because I need more furniture in the shop. Is any questions? I was just saying hello. Nancy says she ordered the corbels. Oh, I will have Zeb grab those. If you haven't seen them, we did kind of a behind the scenes showing how Zeb does the corbel designs. I'm the one that does the internet perusing and I will find random pictures of antique corbels and Zeb does the designs. <laughs> we put that up on our channel. Was it Monday? Yeah, I think so. And I edited the video by myself. You'll probably be able to tell if you watch it because I don't normally edit videos. And by normally, I mean never. But I've done our last three videos. <laughs> I can learn new things, even if it's hard. Okay, so this is not This is thick enough wood, this oak, that it's not wanting to come together just by, like, pressing it. So I'm going to kind of force the issue and make everything nice and flat so that no one gets a pinchy bum when they sit down on this nobody wants a pinchy bum nobody i don't know if you guys can even really see what i'm doing over there do you want to go around the front and just angle the camera down it'll be all right or I he'll don't show want... you up close once again I'll, I'll bring it in close okay i think i need all right i need one more long clamp i'll be right back jamie's very entertaining watch her angela says you did great it's a fun video thank you Carl is cooking soup and beans and baking ham and cornbread for supper. Ooh, that sounds yummy. I think tonight's going to be a leftover night. We have leftover meatloaf. We have leftover taco soup. Zeb and I are actually having steak and potatoes for lunch because we have a few leftover fillets that we didn't cook from New Year's. Um, so we're going to cook those for lunch. We try to do really good about eating our leftovers and not wasting them. Actually, Zeb was... Well, we were on the track walking this morning at the rec center. He's like, we should go out to lunch today. I can't even remember the last time we ate out. Like, it's really been a while. But then I reminded him that we had filet, and he was happy to stay home and eat that. So we've almost got the first video for our uh, other channel we're going to do that's going to center more around, like, our urban homestead situation we've got going on. Um, that's almost ready to go up. We just got to do some voiceover for it and, uh, explain ourselves. That's why I've been doing the last three videos, the editing, because Zeb's been working on a bunch of projects around our house. Um, he's working on projects for the animals. And so when I edit, then it allows him time to get those things done. And my editing is a lot quicker than his because I'm not as particular. <laughs> I, I, I got I to gotta do like two more wax. Hold on just a takes, second. If it takes me longer than 15 minutes to edit a video, I lose interest. But I am trying to be get better. I saw somebody yesterday, Debbie Beard, sent me a gal who does very short aesthetic clips um, in the cinematic mode on her camera, on her phone. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that and see if I can make some better quality edited videos. It's, it's an art form, video content is. At least that's what I tell myself. So that way I stay motivated. So I don't know. The camera's probably not showing. Let me see if I can zoom in right here so you can actually see what I'm trying to accomplish. So right here, this is split, and this is really high. It's got like a – oops. Sorry. I can't hold the camera. All right, so you can see it's got like a little ridge there. And then, so the wide clamp closed the gap, but now I've got to fix that there. So I'm just clamping that down with the, the other clamp. Sometimes you need multiple clamps. You can never have too many clamps. I probably have a few spots to touch up, but I'm going to go ahead and heat gun that top so I can second coat it. And then I'll work on the spots that need touch up. All right. So that popped that down into place. Just want to make sure that that feels flush. Maybe a couple more wax here. I was going to clamp this, but then I'm like, you know what? I can just put a little pressure on there and hit it into place. Okay, now I don't really have any more lip. There's just a slight lip there, but I might be able to sand that down later.
Donna, you only wear long sleeves. Mostly in long sleeves, we have like crew neck sweaters. We are looking at getting a direct to garment printer probably this summer. So that way we can print all of our own designs on demand and carry the sizes that we want. And instead of having to get a full run, we can just print like eight extra larges if we want. Yeah. I mean, we do have some custom, you're going to hit my bench, custom printed stuff, but uh, that's done here in Lehigh, but they actually send it to a printer and then we buy it from printing company. So we're looking at buying one. It's a decent size investment, but I told Deb, it's going to be our reward when we get the second floor and the studio set up at the church and get the third floor like renovated at the shop, then we can make a room just for t-shirt printing and then we'll be able to carry more stuff. We'll see. Uh, Sometimes we do rewards ahead Caitlin, of time. Remind me after this live video or text Ivy because she can order those too. Um, or just text me and Ivy together and I'll have Ivy order those black sheep shirts All right, because I do love them. And if we're running low, I can order more. I need to go grab the corbels. Okay. All right. Save yourself a lot of time and headache and wipe your excess glue off. I, this is just damp cloth and I'll go rinse it out and this glue will wash right out. A lot of your wood glues are water-based so that they dry fast and you can thin them out pretty easily and they clean up pretty easily with water. Okay. Now that the clamping is done, we're going to drill it, but I need, I think I'm going to go run real quick one more time and see if I can find some shorter screws and I'll be right back. So we're going to take a commercial break while Zeb heads out and I'm going to show you. Dun, 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 dun. This is this month's craft kit. You're going to get two of these unpainted and then you'll get two shades of milk paint to create your own look. And I show you how to use wax for a chip and resist. Not in that video, we will be putting, I already put that one up, but we're gonna use these for shelves and I'll get that video done and up. I'm like out of breath from running upstairs. <laughs> I'm trying not to be all breathy in my mic. So hold on, let me get a drink. Zeb's been kicking my butt at the rec center the last few days. We've done two miles a day, three days in a row, which maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but I am sore. Okay, that's better. Anyway, um, if you have not watched this video, check it out, because even if you're not going to get the craft kit, it's a really great way on how to use milk paint for a chippy look. And you also get kind of a behind the scenes. And then either later this week, beginning of next week, we'll show you how to turn these into a shelf and Caitlin can drop a link to the craft kit. Is hemp oil only used for cutting boards and rolling pins? You can use hemp oil on anything. Um, it will not dry super hard the way that tongue oil or liquid top coat would, but it would be comparable to like a waxed finish, Denise. Kai, chair says, <laughs> Kai says chairs are a bummer to paint. They're actually not too bad if you spray them. If you like this to brush is going to be kind of a pain in the bum, but I told Deb, like, you can do it. You can brush a chair. Thank you, Caitlin. She dropped the link to the craft kit. Caitlin, can you drop a link to this video as well? And if you guys see it on Facebook, would you mind sharing it out? Give it some love. Encourage me to want to edit more videos. <laughs> so I'm going to flip this so that I can set the top down, but it's all, the glue's already working. This wood glue you got dries pretty paint. quick. Oh no, you're going to distress it. You know you are. It's just texture. Yeah. Sorry though. It's I'm okay. Sorry. So I did find the shorter screws I needed. They were buried under a bunch of nails that I recently found and somewhat organized and the screws got lost in the organization you ever have that where you're like organizing things and then you don't remember where you organized it to but you did know where it was when it was a mess all the time <laughs> guilty all right i'm gonna let this dry a little bit more i'm gonna heat gun it a little bit but then let it air dry and cool down sometimes if you just heat gun it it kind of gets the process going all right this might be tricky to get i think i can get the drill in there Okay, let's show, I'm going to show you another fun project. If you guys remember 
Two weeks ago, I thrifted a basket. Last week, I showed you the dry brush finish. And today, I'm going to show you the decoupage uh, drop cloth label that I did. We have a full video on it, but it's been a while. So I almost dropped it. But here's my basket. This is already sold. But I just used a drop cloth and used one of our French grain sack stencils on the front. And then liquid patina. And this is like, like you can't peel that off. You just have to use a lot, a lot, a lot of liquid patina on it. And then I also do hot glue inside to hold it in place while the liquid patina is drying. I think we're going to do another video decoupaging baskets like this because Zeb bought a bunch at the store. Sandra H said, Zeb use a paint stripper for, for what? I don't know what you're meaning, Sandra. For this to get it like back to the oak. Right. Thanks, Denise. She said I did good with the video. And Terry says your vibes are definitely prime time. I'm not sure what that means, but I will take prime time vibes. I think she means that she likes like oh, what she, she likes going it? on. Yeah. Okay, we're going to avoid the heat gunning for a second. We're going to get a close-up of what's actually happening right here. All right, so here's that. If you're just joining, just pre-drilled, countersunk the holes on this, and then... We glued this up, got it all clamped. Now I'm going to attempt to drill around the clamps or screw around the clamps. We'll see how that goes. But first, I keep putting this down. I want to put some glue on this too because that's you, – you don't ever discount the wood glue. It makes stuff so strong. We used wood glue to – secure a poster to cardboard for a frame picture we put up <laughs> wood glue is like our glue du jour because we just have it on hand i have i keep gallons of it because it's it's like a third the cost if you buy it by the gallon and we go through a lot okay i think we're ready oh you still can't really see that that well huh Ooh. There it is. Feels like a crazy angle, but it's not too bad. You have to use both hands. This You're oak, this oak is hard. It. I might have to countersink down into the oak. I think I will. Just a touch. Oh, can't make it into those. We're just going to have to go for it with the smaller drill. Yes, yeah, Sandy is fixing a cracked seat. This has been hanging out outside the shop. They've been a, a little neglected. I'm going to have to use my hand. All right, I'm going to go down in between the rungs. Wish me luck. Oh no, my battery is too big. My drill is too big. <laughs> That's your little drill, isn't it? Hang on. Time out. Hold I have please. a smaller battery that goes on that. Let me I'm see. I'm just second coating this. It's very exciting. They're just staring off at the drill right now or at the wood. Oh, well, just picture me. I'm over here with Queen Bee in my hand and I'm second coating this cute little bench or whatever it is, stool. Mama Neil says, I have two chairs with cane bottoms. Would you go back with that or something different? If the caning is broken, I would just replace it with a piece of plywood and upholster the seats and then screw them in from the bottom just because caning is notoriously hard to fix. But caning is coming back in popularity. So if you have patience, you could recane it. But I, if you're not good at that or haven't done it before, you <laughs> might not get out the time that you put into it. So this stylistically, yes, caning is awesome. This is the episode where you guys watch me struggle trying to get my big old hand through here. You're, do you need me to help you? I have little hands. I just had to use my monkey skills. Your monkey skills? They're very good at dexterity. 
Every time I think I have this all the way painted, I've like missed a spot. Maybe. I need to get the magnetic. Oh, I didn't do this whole underside lip. <laughs> it's funny because I said that I was going to paint under this, you know, before I got started. And somehow I missed that spot. I mean, technically, you don't have to paint the underside of a bench. But I like to because especially those little ones, they always get seen from every angle. All right. I think I got. Okay. That's on there super good and flush. Let's uh, let's bring you back up to the fun the fun half. Terry says I collect chairs like that and paint them black. They go with everything. Yeah, these chairs are awesome. So the scrap wood underneath is that going to be permanent? The scrap wood underneath is permanent. I will I will do some dark and decrepit on there. It's okay if it's a little whatever. It's better than a chair that's broken. It's kind of like if we have chairs that are probably early 1900s that somebody repaired with wire. We left it. It looks I cool. I love them. Is this your drinking water? Cynthia, the, yeah. Cynthia, the block was just for um, stability. It's just common pine that I had sitting around. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. If you want to go back with oak, you probably could. But now that that's on there, I'm going to remove these clamps and see if it springs back or if we're good to go. We should be good to go and take the clamps off. Did that still separate out? I wasn't watching it. I want to take them off so I can paint it, but we might have to. I think I'm going to do a big crinoline stripe down the middle. All right, we got to leave this clamp on on the side because it's wanting to. So the screws are holding it on the bottom, but the top is wanting to do this. So we'll leave the clamp on and I will go grab the other chair and we'll start painting that one. It still has snow on it, so we'll see if I can even can paint it. Can you quickly go through the stencil? See if you can find me a grain sack stripe. Yeah. And then I'm going to do that in crinoline and then I'm going to do my grain sack stencil on top because I feel like this needs a little bit more contrast. I Today's like the day spots. of, I thought I had enough tools out, but you can never have too many clamps and I've had to make eight trips to the garage. All right. We tried. Cynthia says she just bought six chairs like that. She's going to paint Gustavian style. That is a lot of patience to do Gustavian style on that many detailed chairs. So if you see me doing this, there's like bubbles because... I'm holding it someplace too long and whatever. It's fine because I'm going to distress it. But always, if you're using a heat gun, keep it moving. Keep it moving. All right. So this will get darker when I seal it. But um, oh, I like the color on this. I also, can you use fabric paint to stencil fabric? Will it hold the washing up? Yes, if you use fabric paint you can or we use DIY paint and then we wait 24 hours we heat seal it and the then we DIY paint is super easy that's what we use I mean you could use fabric paint but DIYs that we have on hand and we do it all the time so the, the trick is if you're using DIY paint on fabric the fabric should be clean and not have any sizing or softener in it stencil wait 24 hours heat seal it with an iron to the appropriate setting of the fabric wait till we wash it and just know it will fade over time, but it will hold up after that. I actually have, I, <laughs> I never heat sealed these, which is why they didn't last. And I washed this probably no less than 200 times. You can still see the Jamie Ray vintage on here. Should I have heat sealed it? Yeah. Did I? No. And that's just regular DIY paint. <laughs> so he says, I'm glutton for punishment, I guess, and naive. You know what? Once the chairs are all done, it'll be awesome. And I always just like to tell people that not because... Can you not find the stencils? Um, I have a ton of them here, but I'm looking for the grain sack stripes. It's long and skinny. Yep. Um, but I like to tell people the time involved because if you're trying to make money on something, sometimes it's harder. But if it's for your personal use, it's okay to take a little bit longer. Can you not find... I could do it the old-fashioned way with uh, painter's tape. I was just trying to be Hold, easy please. And lazy. Just take a time out. Take a time out and stare at the camera. 
go grab that other chair. I only have, I don't think we have them here. I think the last one you melted with the heat gun and we haven't replaced it. Okay, I'll just do, just give me some painter's tape. It's just a little bit more involved. I'll get a measuring tape out. That's going to be the other hard part, finding painter's tape. Rack, stop stop it. So, of course, it's 11 and a half inches and not 12. So, that makes it five and three quarters is the middle. Yeah, but I don't have painter's tape over here either. What? You guys, there's nothing out there. You barking at the snow falling off the tree? You don't have painter's tape. <laughs> Did you look in this drawer? Of course I looked in the drawer. Why did I have this is why I we're working on getting organized strike. in 2023. I've been cleaning out the barn. I got I was able, it's not like organized in any way, shape, or form. And I'll I I videoed it. I showed you how bad it was. Um it's still bad, but I was able to get the tractor in there last night which was great because it's been getting snowed on and then I've been having to plow with it in the morning and there's like eight inches of snow on it the other day on the seat and that never warmed up the whole time I was uh <laughs> I was plowing um you're right there is no stencil in here. yeah there's there's a ton of stencils over there just do a different stencil but what I do have currently is a mess yeah there is a big mess of stencils just I, I just would just really do this a stripe well, you can do the stripe later. Just do this big one right here. But you didn't find tape either, did you? No. I told you I didn't know where the tape got off to. Is it in our bathroom? No, unless you took it up there. We've been repainting the floorboards and all the whole house, and Jamie randomly has the painter's tape everywhere. Oh, she left. She left to go find it. She's really dedicated to these stripes. So this, I think, is the one. I don't know if she's even showed you guys yet. This We have this in a mini. We use it a lot. You know what? I think I Jack actually, took it because he was doing is, targets with one of my Nerf favorites. guns. I love the look of wheat. I don't know why. I just like it. It's because delicious things come from that. And I can no longer have it. So you want what you can have, right? No, no gluten. Well, I shouldn't say no gluten. I've been eating the Kamut flour stuff, and it's I seem to be able to tolerate it. All right, I give up. Um, I'll just and stencil it. has it. some gluten in it. It's just a higher protein, ancient grain. But now I'm all out of shape, out of shape, out of breath. Did you find it? No. Okay, I'm just gonna stencil this on here for you. Why don't while you're up? Why don't you grab? We can do the grain sack stripes on here later. Like I'll just tape no, it off. No, it's okay. Um, but why don't you go grab that other chair? It's in the garage. What? Why don't you grab the other chair? It's in the oh, garage. Okay. The one that's. I know Jack had it last though because there's a big old target he taped to the wall oh, upstairs for his Nerf guns. Jack was taping the targets that he drew for his Nerf guns onto the wall. <laughs> uh, the fun things when you have a ton of people living in the same house, you're like, where's all my stuff? All right, I'm going to just bring you guys close because you're, you're probably tired of looking at me and hearing me talk about random things. All right, hopefully you can see that a little better. I've just, let me look at it straight on for a sec. We're a little wide that way. Okay. We're not measuring, we're just going. So this is, weathered wood and you've probably seen a stencil with it a thousand times but it looks good on every color it looks good on white it looks good over the top of blues and greens it looks good on this yellow yellow and brown go together really well I'm just gonna paint the top of this chair and then we'll stencil it and we'll paint the rest oh later. you went you went right there with the the queen, queen bee. bee is the color of the day you know how on sesame street they have the number of the day and the letter of the day We've got the color we have of the, the day. color of the day. So if you're not going to tape, I'm not stenciling unless my hand is holding this stencil down and I hold over the edge. So I'll hold here and my finger because sometimes if you just hold on the top of the stencil, it'll slide as you pounce. This may take four years to dry because it was slightly wet when I it had it. snow on it still. I tried to knock it off, but it was like soaked down into whatever weird finish was on there. It's gotten super bright. Can you fix the camera? Oh, yeah. 
There we are. Yeah, and he says, I think painter's tape has legs. We have three rolls of it. Well, I have like, I bought when we were doing the shop renovation, <clears throat> I had, I got one like the contractor pack that comes with six rolls and we ended up only using one of the rolls. And it's neatly organized in those cabinets I installed in the corner of the barn that we can't get to because there's furniture in front of it. <laughs> I did it real. I showed how very little furniture was actually in the barn. I do need you to call your friend that bought my desk and have her come get I just texted her. Because it is like front and center in the way right now. Caitlin, can you search, if you have a second, uh, Jamie Ray Vintage Decoupage Basket? See if that video comes up on YouTube and drop that link for Monica. Monica, if we can't find it, just DM us on Facebook and I will search for that link later. <laughs> Caitlin has access to our Amazon account and she just let me know that my mini brands is out for delivery and wants to know if I'm gonna make a video with them. Jamie's obsessed with mini brands. She got them for the kids. It's for the children. She got it's them for, for the, the kids children. for Christmas and eight year old Jamie popped up out of nowhere and bought like 12 more mini bread stores. I, and, and the kids aren't the ones organizing it or shopping in her little mini brand they market. They do too. They help me. Um, I have the food court coming today. If you don't know what mini brands are, it's they like literally they have like these little eggs and they're mystery eggs and inside of them you unwrap teeny tiny replicas of things you would buy at the store like they, groceries they and got like cereal and little cereal candy bars and, and, and toys we have a disney toy store and they're little and very detailed and very very cute and i'm finally to the point where i don't have little kids that'll like ruin it if we set it all up it's currently <laughs> in my family room and as soon as we finish the basement into the playroom we're gonna have an entire shelf of it and it's just something fun that i do with the kids they enjoy opening them and so for holidays they get mini brands and then we we organize them it's a thing Jan says, I love mini brands. My granddaughter loves them. See, I'm not the only adult who loves them. So you probably can't see. I'm offloading this brush down below here every time. I'm not just going straight full loaded brush. So are you going to do like a dark wax on this or are you just going to leave this yellow like super bright and distress that blue color that was distress on there? it and then we'll see. I don't know. How can I know till I distress it okay. and clear wax it and then take a moment. So I didn't know. I heard you telling them that I was going to build a chicken coop today. I didn't know that was on the agenda. I feel like I need to get the barn the rest of the no, way no, no, cleared no, no. out. I was just saying like I'm going to be editing videos <laughs> so you can do things like building a chicken coop. Oh, gotcha. I thought you were gonna do that today. I need to. Our so we had a okay situation for the chickens and the sheep, but the roof is not holding, and so I've had to wrap like the chicken coop in a it was makeshift to get us through. We kind of scabbed it up. Let's be honest, it was never gonna be a permanent thing. And we got a chicken coop from a neighbor, but the birds don't go in it. I don't know why, but they won't go in there. Um, it's because it's ugly and our birds just can't go in it. <laughs> and they're sleeping in the tree and they're all snow covered every time I go out there in the morning. They must be okay because we haven't had any birds die of exposure. Um, but I'm going to make them like a real proper coop where we can like slide drawers out and clean it real good and keep them up high where they can roost, which was always the plan. We just, now it's like an emergency. I will paint the rest of this chair later in case anybody's wondering. Caitlin, can you drop uh, the Amazon link to the mini brands that's coming today? Just in case anybody is like, I don't know what mini brands are. <laughs> Although if you get addicted to mini brands after we drop the Amazon link, don't blame me. <laughs> All right, we are almost, this is a big stencil. This is probably one of our largest, most detailed stencils with all this grain, but it's going to be worth it. I'm gonna bring you in close for the reveal. I know you've been patiently waiting and all your dogs are barking because I've been pouncing. 
All right. All right. So while you're doing that, oh, Kathleen, hold on. Are you gonna? Kathleen has a question. She says, "A lot of bedroom sets come with a full size bed. Is there any way to make the headboard look right for a queen size bed?" I don't know because I every headboard would be different. However, I do think um, one of our favorite things to do with full size beds because people don't really sleep in them as much is to turn them into benches. So we turn them into headboard footboard benches. Love this stencil. It came out so good. It's super detailed. I got a little bit juicy right here, but you can't even really tell. We're going to leave the registration marks that go around the circle because typically grain sacks are stenciled, so they would have those. But if you don't want these marks here, all you have to do is wait till it dries completely, put the stencil on, you just and shift it, rotate it, and then you can do the little marks. You can fill them here. In. I can just do it and show you. Okay. I'll I'm just, I'll just do it. Just be very neat. So if your you stencil's dirty underneath because you got juicy, don't put it back on. So you do have to be careful. <clears throat> you don't want to go out of this line and get the rest of your stencil weird. Butch Smith, how hard is it to turn pottery? Tell them, Zeb. So far, we have been unsuccessful. We're taking another class. <clears throat> I'm like, you know what? I need a refresher course. It's been like 23 years, 24 years since I've uh, centered something. And that's the... Honestly, if you can get your pottery to center, then it goes pretty quick and easy after that. All right, I got like a little hair right here. I'm just gonna. I was gonna heat gun this, but honestly, this chair was so damp from the snow, it's gonna take forever. So I'm just gonna paint it and Zeb can heat gun that and distress it and we'll work on finishing that bench while I paint this chair. There we go. Now, once that dries, you won't be able to hardly even tell. Was slightly, Queenie slightly off. Is the perfect French mustard color. Do you like French? I like. I said I like it in small doses. I don't like big pieces with it. But a chair here, a bench there, it's really cute, and it does brighten up a space. And this color is going to look good for spring. But honestly, this color with uh, like some fall colors goes well too. Do you need me to heat gun this so that we? Yeah, can I get put this. that over there so you can heat gun that so you can finish that because this chair is not going to get done on this live video. Just disclaiming that right now. Bringing in all the spring colors, yellow included. It can be a spring transitioning into summer color. We're right? working on a mustardy color for their cottage color line right now. I'm just going to worry about the top. I'll probably let the rest of it just dry. What time is it? Oh, we got time. We got lots of time. I think pottery turning is fun to watch, but takes a lot of patience. It does. And there's a lot of steps. I'm like, going to tell you right now, if I ever master it, you're going to have to maybe like second mortgage your house to buy a piece because they take so long. I'm like, no wonder. Well, I we never were, understood why these master potters charge like $400 for something. Well, I'm we like, were watching a guy in the UK. He's actually got like a really cool like ASMR type channel. I forget the name of it. Um, if you look up centering pottery, his video is like the number one video. Yeah. Um, but he, we went to his website because I'm like, man, this is taking him forever. And he's super fast and very organized and really methodical about what he's doing. I'm like, this is, this is, like, it's not worth his time unless he's charging hundreds of dollars for this small teapot. We looked it up. He's charging like $400 for a teapot that's like this big. So I was like, you know what, that that feels like the right price for the amount of time he put into that. And also the amount of expertise that he, took him to get there to that point. Yeah, it takes a, it's a lot. It's a definitely a, a next level skill. But I like, but, I like challenges. So I, I want to challenge myself to get creative with something. If it takes me years to figure out, it's fine. I have other ways I can make money. Well, I'm doing something that makes me zero dollars. But also, we went to his website because I'm like, man, maybe I want to buy one of his pots. Nope. And we saw him make probably 30 or 40 in one video because he did long form video um, where he did the whole process. And all of his $400 teapots were sold out. Like he didn't, yeah. it said sold out on the listing. He didn't have any of them left. And he made like 30 of them, sold them for like 400 bucks a piece. <laughs> Nancy says those mini brands are adorable. I just looked them up. Do you guys want me to do an unboxing video? Because I would do that for you. <laughs> this channel's about to get weird and varied. <laughs> uh, well, a short video, not like a long one. Just do a, re just do like a story. <laughs> A mini I brand love it. Story. There's like little mini shopping carts, and then you can push them through your little mini store, and you can put stuff in it. I don't. Why is mini stuff so cute? I have no idea, but it's too fun. Well, do you remember micro machines? 
back in the day with the like the yes. little cars and the little they used to do like Star Wars stuff. Those were my favorite. We've had Star Wars micro machines. I feel like you know you hear a lot of therapists saying you need to do inner child work. And I feel like when I play with mini brands, that is inner child work. I'm not sure if that's what the therapist means, but for me, that's what it's going to be. They'll be like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm buying some therapy. That's pretty cheap therapy, if you ask me. And when I'm done with it, I can donate the therapy to somebody that wants to play with it because I'm not a hoarder. Like if I get too much of something, I will get rid of it. I mean, I keep it all and keep adding. Zeb has boxes and boxes of stuff. Not me. Denise wants an unboxing video. So this it. is this is the beauty of the DIY clay-based paint. Instead of peeling and rolling up when I'm sanding it, we just heat gun this and you can see the powder. Now be careful because the gray will smear. Um, we don't care because we want it to look old, but just keep that in mind and just blow. Or you can also use like a paper towel or a lint-free rag. I'm going to just do a dry paper towel. A bookshelf in Queen Bee would be really pretty. Lisa said she painted one. So the picture. Queen Bee is a lot like the reds. Just know that this powder is still super pigmented. You could probably hydrate this and make new paint out of it. <laughs> You, you know, so you it will get it, it will get everywhere if you're not careful. So if you don't want it all over your house, you know we got the drop cloth here in our kitchen. It's pretty easy cleanup, but I would not recommend doing this somewhere carpeted. We once painted something red in the living room on a drop cloth. I will never do. And then I started inside. distressing it, and it was like a powder bomb went off of red <laughs> in the living room. We were chasing red dust for I think probably a good month. Yeah, that is a struggle. All right, so you see how much of that powder came off and I, even some went down on the drop cloth. But now that we're done with that, I'm gonna try to get the last little remnants so that when I do seal it, it doesn't mix in. So I don't want that all in my gray. What will we seal it with? I think we're going to do wax on this. You know, I think I'm going to wax it right now. I'll, yeah. I'll wax this you top. Watch us seal it. So I'm you just could, over here painting the chair. So you could do a liquid sealer, but just know it might pull some of that gray because this isn't cured. If you want to, I would let it sit for a couple days if you're going to do a liquid sealer because this paint's going to cure up harder. Um, and and you'll, ha you'll have a chance to do like one light coat of liquid sealer. Like you could do some big top on there or liquid patina and that would i would do a real light coat first let that dry all the way then you can go back and put like three or four layers on because this is meant to be stood on so you yeah you don't so you want, want to overwork it, to be it so the trick is to have a loose <laughs> wrist when you're sealing it and easy breezy just put a light coat on it be patient let it dry and then if you want to add more coats you can let's see i have white wax white wax caitlin says that looks so good Thank clear you. I, you know, it's always good to use colors you haven't used in a while. You got you to gotta shake things up. We're shaking things up in 2023. All right. I'm going to wash this brush out. We've been using the one and a quarter inch stencil brush to do most of our waxing lately. And it has been so great because it's, it's a little smaller and it gets, we usually do furniture with quite a bit of detail and it can get in that detail pretty easily. Debbie is going to tease me when she sees that I use Queen Bee because I just was teasing her about it. Because she's like, was talking about my yellow color that I came up with for the cottage color line. She's like, Queen Bee's a good mustard. I'm like, yeah. And here I am using it. So this, this brush, the reason I'm washing is because it's got white wax kind of still in it. So I'm just going to wash it out real good here. We'll talk more about it on Thursday when we do our shop tour and show the sale collection. But I haven't really talked about it or advertised it much. IOD is retiring a bunch of products and we have tons of IOD 15% off until it's gone um, on the website in our sale collection right now. So if there's any of the things you want in there, I would get it because once we sell out, we're not going to restock because IOD is retiring. It. Well, and it's easy to find. You just hit that sale tab right at the first front of the website and it takes you right to it. 
and it's a good uh, tab to save in your browser because we're updating that cell collection a couple times a week as we clear things out or get things that I get out. I actually have some fun stuff that I just bought brand new, but I got a really good deal on it that we're going to put in the sale collection. That is my goal for 2023. Show you guys how to stretch product, get the most bang for your buck, like stenciling shirts, stenciling decor, stenciling furniture, all kinds of stenciling. And then also to find good deals on things and pass them along. A little more work on my part to browse the clearance section of my wholesalers, but I'm here for that. I actually have a. FaceTime. It's pretty great when you can get a really great deal, though. I have a FaceTime appointment with one of my favorite wholesalers after this video. She's gonna take her on a FaceTime tour of the sh of her the warehouse. warehouse, and Jamie's gonna be like, "I want that. I want that. Well, I want that." I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna see. This usually costs me a lot of money when you do this with her. <laughs> I am going to restock Dobles because we're sold out of a bunch of them and they are some of our best sellers. So DIY clear wax. It's the perfect creamy clear wax. Super soft. I mean, this is just room temperature and it's all pasty and you don't have to like wear your arm out. If you've ever bought like the hard, the waxes they sell at the hardware store, it's like a workout and I hate it. I will never go back. So this is the one and a quarter brush. The smaller stencil brushes work really well for, for waxing too. We use those with the colored waxes a lot for detail work. Or if we just don't want to put a ton of color on it, like we just want a little bit of. All right. So you see, you see the highs and lows here. Well, let me bring that down so you can see the highs and lows. All right. So, so you can see where I've got good coverage up here. And then right here, I only did like a half swipe and you can see that line. If you get that, come back in with more wax. That means there's not enough wax there. It didn't absorb fully into the paint because we have what we call the freak out moment in waxing where you're like, oh no, it's all splotchy. If you got splotchy wax, it's a high chance you didn't get enough wax on your piece and you either need to wait and do another coat or go back on with more wax right now. What molds will retire? I don't know if any of the molds, I don't think there are any molds that are retiring. I think there's transfers and stamps, if I remember correctly. But IOD has so many products that I have to do a sale and clear out the retire stuff to make room in my shipping room for the new stuff that will come in about a month. Because we sometimes when I, we have a sale, it's because IOD marked them down, and this is not the case. This is just us marking them down to clear out room and to give you guys a good deal on some things that maybe you didn't get before. So even cleaning the brush out, I still got some white wax that came through. I, it probably needs like a good soak and some cleaner overnight. So I'm gonna, I don't want the white wax on there. So I'm gonna wipe that back a little bit. We got a lot of wax into that paint. It completely absorbed down in. I think All right, this chair is so. gonna get a heavy distress because I'm not gonna like be super like detail oriented with the situation. Okay, wiped off the excess, still picked up some of that dust. Like I said, the queen bee, just be aware. <laughs> it's gonna, it's so pigmented to get it this vibrant and cover good. All right, that's pretty much done. We need to wait for the rest, rest to dry. It's still got some wet spots down underneath here. We're gonna let that dry out and then we'll distress that and do the wax like we did on the top here and just leave that one stencil, but that's, that's there. And this'll this'll tone back. It won't stay this dark. It'll be somewhere in between the two shades. And I'm just over here painting a chair. You want to show them where we're at with the chair? Yep. I mean, I haven't been doing it too long. But it now does, the Queen Bee does have really great coverage. For a yellow, the Queen Bee is amazing because typically the yellow pigment is the hardest to cover. It doesn't cover well. I don't know why. It's like worse than whites. But I think the Queen Bee has like enough brown tones in it. It's the clay. It's the clay. The clay also helps. But like cake <laughs> batter doesn't cover this well. No. And it's because this has more brown tones. So if you want a yellow that covers Can I have better. your brush? You missed like a whole Yeah. Strip. Well, I didn't do that yet. Oh, I don't know why I'm showing you the ceiling. I really cranked Do you want to see our on. ceiling? Dun, da, da, dun. 
I painted some spindle kitchen chairs for my granddaughter uh, with regular good cabinet paint. It took me about four coats. Oh gosh, no. If you are going to be painting spindle chairs and you are brushing, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's not because I want to sell you more paint, which I do like to sell paint, but DIY paint is where it's at because the coverage is so much better than traditional paint. The coverage is even better than like our cottage color paint. And when you have to do something with this much detail, it's so nice to have good coverage. Another quick like pro tip, if you do want to use the cottage color, find a DIY paint that's similar, like white swan, if you want to do white, paint the whole chair in white swan, then do the second and third coat with cottage color. And then you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. And by then it'll have good coverage and it'll be sealed and ready to go. I also do that with milk paint. <laughs> if I'm doing white, I paint DIY paint. Then I paint milk paint. Much better coverage. We're actually running out. We're almost out of paint. Um, yeah, we might have to add some water this, to finish that this, up. Well, or just go get some more From paint. From the store. Yes. I know a place that You know has a place some. that could sell you DIY paint. If you guys want Queen Bee or the French grain sack stencil that we use, jamierayvintage.com has all of that. And then we also carry our thrift flips. So if you're like, eh, it's cute, but I don't want to do my own stuff. It's cool. We'll sell you our thrift flips. Um, just click Saturday Thrift Hall and all those items are in there. Let me see if we've got any questions before we leave. What cleaner do we use on the brushes? I typically, we do sell a brush soap by DIY that's pretty good. It's but really I good. typically use our French soap that we carry on our website or we have a kitchen soap. And it's right there. You it's right them. here. And that's why I use it because it's handy. And I just use this. I clean out my brushes good first to get most of the paint out. And then I finish them with our dish soap. It's gentle. It's not harsh on your brush. And it works pretty well. And the, also another nice thing about using these, this type of paint, this, uh, the DIY paint dries flat. So I could go all crazy with my brush strokes and it's like, uh, you're not going to get highs and lows in your sheens, you, especially once you get a couple coats on there. Now you may see the brush strokes in your distressing or if you're not distressing, so you still want to be neat, but it's not going to matter as much, That's especially spraying charm. too. Like when you spray, like I just spray like, all willy nilly. I just got to fix some on this end. Okay. So I did have and a it doesn't question. Matter. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. No, but you're good. I don't want to forget my ADHD is strong today. Um, Sandra said, do you think there will be bleed through? If you think that there will be bleed through, my suggestion is rather than starting with DIY paint first, start with Salvation Solution Primer in white. It's nice and thick. It will give you a great base coat to get started with. It's already white, so that's great. And it will seal up any bleed through. Sometimes you have to do two coats if it's bad bleed through. And then just use the cottage color on top of that. Cottage color in and of itself won't necessarily stop bleed through, but I have found pieces that probably would have bled if I painted them with DIY paint and then used a liquid sealer that did not bleed because the cottage color has a built-in sealer, so it helps a little bit. All right, I think this chair is mostly done. Yeah, those are gonna be oh. fun to paint right in there. I'll just get a little artist brush when we're not live and touch that up, and then I'm gonna get my sander and give it a big distress. All right, I think that's it for today, guys. We are out of projects. The chair is repaired. Someone asked about the chair repair, like if we're going to leave that strip of wood in there. You're not really going to see it. I've repaired a ton of chairs. Unless you get down eye level with that, you're, you're never going to know that that repair is there. So we'll just paint it to match whatever we do with the rest of the chair. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that share button and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. Have a great Wednesday.